time to talk about score rails a little bit. Uh, this is something you're going to have to deal with on any of these electromechanical games. I've got a wide array of different score rails here. Uh, down this row, we've got uh, Gottlieb, some Williams. Here I've got some Bally. Here I've got Chicago Coin. And then in the middle here, I've got uh, later uh, Gottlieb Decagon units. We're going to talk about each one of these. But basically, to surmise, they're all essentially the same. They all do the same thing and operate the same way. It's just the execution that's slightly different for each manufacturer. All right, let's talk about these Gottlieb units first. These are from the 60s. These are known as Rat Trap. This is one that does not have a match or high score unit on it. This is the same reel, but it's got a printed circuitry board here to give it a, the reel and indication logic behind finding either the match number or a high score number. This is the same reel, but with the metal rat trap removed so that you can see the innards, including the zero position switches, the nine carryover switch, and the end of stroke switch, which is right here. Starting in the late 1960s, Gottlieb moved away from the rat trap style uh, reels to what is known as the Decagon reels. In the first generation of Decagon reels, the plastic reel was actually had 10 sides. It, I mean, it was actually flat where the numbers were printed, where these are round. They only used that for a few years, and then they went to this style. And here's a couple generations. These two here, actually, these two here are the same. One has got a high score or match printed circuitry board on it, and this one is the same reel, but it does not have that. This is a different style at Decagon. They tried to get a little bit more elegant um, and make this board smaller. This way it was easier to service and easier to get to these the um, nine carryover switch and the zero switches over here. Here's two Bally reels from the 1970s. These are pretty much identical, except this one has a match slash high score board on it, and this one does not. But they're pretty similar, you know, otherwise. And these are real solid reels. They work really well. Um, got an end stroke switch right here, and up here we've got uh, nine position and zero position switches. Here's two different styles of 1970s Williams reels. You can notice one's smaller and one's larger. The larger one's earlier, smaller one is later. They operate identical, it's just the size that's, that's different. You would think that the uh, Williams reel looks very, very close to the Bally reel, and in fact it, it is very close, but it's not the same. Um, there is like no interchangeable parts. So these are the, the Williams reels. These are real durable. The only problem with these reels is if the coil locks on, it likes to melt this plastic activator where it meets um, the metal plunger that goes into the coil. That's real common and then you have to replace that whole part because it melts and breaks. Real, real common on these. Happens occasionally on the Bally ones too, but for some reason I see that problem a lot more on the Williams reels. Chicago Coins units uh, during the 50s and 60s were very similar to Gottlieb's rat traps, except they used uh, a plastic real uh, number instead of, instead of metal like Gottlieb did. Um, this is a 1970s Chicago coin unit with the printed circuitry board. There's no physical switches other than these fingers that ride along on the circuit board. This causes a lot of problems. Usually you get in the zero position, you get burn marks on the circuit board, um, which makes this reel really difficult to work on because it can never find the zero position. So Chicago coin wasn't real, didn't make real durable score reels during the 1970s.